Let's look at innovation in running shoes and what the drivers of those innovations were. Before running shoes were worn, humans ran and hunted barefoot, running for miles at a time, often on unstable terrain, sometimes running the equivalent distance of multiple marathons in a single day. The plimsolls, designed by Keds, were the first documented athletic shoe. The plimsolls were an innovation made possible because of Charles Goodyear, who in 1844 discovered the process of vulcanization of rubber, which transformed the typically sticky material to something more durable and pliable. In other words, the perfect material for the sole of a running shoe. The New Balance Trackster was the original high-performance running shoe. It is the first shoe that was ever scientifically tested. It has a rippled rubber sole to optimize traction, arch support for high impact, and was the first shoe to come in both different sizes and different widths. The American running boom of the 1970s and 1980s was the driver for innovation in running shoe design away from the standard flat-soled rubber shoes. It was during this time that the first shoes were developed primarily for running. The start of this boom is often credited to American runner Frank Shorter after his gold medal win for the marathon in the 1972 Olympics. The sport really became popular for women when American runner Joan Benoit won the gold medal for the marathon in the 1984 Olympic Games. Nike released a shoe in 1972 with a waffled rubber sole to increase traction, similar in function to the rippled sole of the Trackster seen 10 years earlier. Notice the additional cushioning in the sole of the shoe that elevates the heel. This incremental product change would over time cause a change in the way we run and the way we look at running. Heel cushioning has since spawned a series of other designs that offer cushioning in the arch and in the ball of the foot in an attempt to target alternative muscles while running. These new designs are said to change the way running is performed and the physical benefits of running. Reebok Easy Tone shoes were an innovation in product positioning using cushioning that was aimed at the female market. Shake it up, make me feel good, make me feel good. Show me that wicked attitude. Let me up, make it all right. Do you think like you're doing all night? Reebok Easy Tone. Proven to tone your hamstrings, calves, and butt up to 28% more. Reebok Easy Tone with Balance Ball inspired technology. Better legs and a better butt with every step. Innovation in running shoes has changed in recent years to something more reflective of retrovation. Dr. Nathan Gradanis, an associate professor of business administration at the University of Manitoba, describes retrovation as a specific form of innovation that utilizes largely forgotten past practices and products to address current problems and market opportunities. Some scientists are readdressing the biomechanics of past running practices, and this has some runners ditching their running shoes altogether. Dr. Daniel E. Lieberman, a Harvard University professor of evolutionary biology, has looked into how wearing modern running shoes since the 1970s has altered how humans run by altering the way that the foot strikes the ground. What we discovered was that uh, barefoot runners run often very differently from the way your typical shod runner uh, runs. So the shoe has got a big heel and it's designed to make it very comfortable to land on your heel and so a lot of shod runners land on the heel, right? And then they bring them up to their foot down. So when you land again on your heel, your, your body comes to a dead stop, and there's a lot of mass, and so there's an impact, there's a, there's a, there's a rapid force. It's, it's like somebody hitting you on the heel with a hammer about two to three times your body weight. So when we started bringing barefoot runners into the lab, we discovered that they, they didn't like to do that, right? They typically landed on the front of their foot, pretty horizontally, not, 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 not like that, but just a little bit, so that they, they land underneath the, the heads of the fourth and fifth metatarsal often, and then they bring the heel down. And when we ran them over force plates, we discovered that they didn't have that big spike, that impact transient that is typically associated with a heel strike.
So what barefoot runners tend to do is by landing more towards the front of the foot and then letting the heel come down afterwards. And what that does is it converts the energy that would otherwise be a dead stop, right? A vertical deceleration of the leg. It, it converts that into rotational energy. Innovation in barefoot running can be described using Dr. Gradanis' proposed model of retrovation. The biomechanics of running and slow motion video were not available in the days before shoes when humans ran barefoot. It is rare that new knowledge and new technology can direct us back toward a primitive practice that required little to no technology at all. Research today indicates that an average 30% of runners suffer injuries to their feet or legs. This high prevalence of injury is a potential driver for runners to seek out new innovations in running. Dr. Lieberman's research into evolutionary biology shows that we evolved from mid or forefoot strikers when running barefoot to predominantly rear foot strikers since the introduction of the modern running shoe. Nowadays, 75% of shod runners are rear foot strikers. This understanding into our evolution provides even more support for barefoot running. Years of innovation in running shoe design go right out the window if running shoes are no longer preferred. Even Nike, who we credited with the first cushioned shoe, has come out with a totally new minimalist shoe, the Nike Free, to compete with other minimalist shoes on the market. In July of 2011, the New York Times indicated that sales of stability running shoes, such as those with cushioning, were down 18% over the previous year, and that sales of minimalist shoes, such as these Vibram Five Fingers, were up 283%. I don't know yet what percentage of the market this would represent, but the steep increase in sales indicate that minimalist shoes are emerging as the dominant design in running shoe innovation. Many podiatrists and runners are speaking out about barefoot running and minimalist shoes. Some runners feel that this innovation is a radical deviation from the norm and that it may be too difficult for long-time runners to adjust to a new running style. Podiatrists are wary that this innovation may result in more foot-related injuries as runners transition too quickly without proper training and adjustment techniques. In October 2011, the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research conducted a study of more than 6,000 runners on the idea of barefoot and minimalist running. More than 75% of respondents indicated that they were at least somewhat interested in barefoot running or in minimalist shoes. More than 1 in 5 had tried actual barefoot running and 30% had tried running in minimalist footwear. Running shoe innovation in 2012 is more about biomechanics than shoe design. New shoe designs contain minimal materials that act merely as a stylish physical barrier to protect feet from the elements.